Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of OpenIGO Insider. Today we have a slightly different format for you. I have a dear friend of mine here, Oscar, who is an intern at the Organization of American States. Today I will be interviewing him and I hope that this is a very helpful and useful tool for those of you who are interested in starting an internship with this organization. Hi, Oscar. How are you doing? Hi, Ingra. Thank you for having me here. It's a huge pleasure to contribute to this uh, beautiful project. And um, well, as you said, my name is Oscar Ivan Barrera. I'm from Colombia and I'm currently an intern of the Organization of American States in the financial department section. Perfect. So I have prepared a couple questions for you. Are you ready? Let's get started. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So could you tell me, how did you come to know about this opportunity with the OAS? Okay. Well, I have to mention that in the case of Colombia, the organization has a special mission there. So I think we are more likely to know about it, what this organization is doing in the region. So we know at least the, at least it by name. So that's the reason I, yeah, you feel like interesting. If you are uh, very passionate about international, uh, uh, environment, about politics, about um, that language even. So I think this is an organization that you're going to uh, pick up easily. So after this, I decided to go to the website and see that they also have this opportunity, this internship opportunity, and well, why not decide to apply? Nice. And could you brief, br uh, briefly explain the selection process? So for those people that are interested in starting an internship with the organization but have absolutely no idea on how to proceed, how would you explain the selection process to them? Sure. Well, uh, first, I would like to say that they need to uh, go to the website and see what the organization is doing in the region to understand better uh, about the pillars and all the objectives this organization has or this body regional uh, organization has. And secondly, uh, we are very lucky because the organization has a special section in their website when you can find all the information about the internship uh, process. So they have three rounds to selections process that you can come to Washington DC uh, in spring, winter section, summer summer section and the fall section so you have three options to apply and um, well in that section they are going to uh, explain you what is it about the program and how you can apply which basically is to fill a form that they have all are the uh, desired profile that they are looking for and all uh, those other requirements that you need to uh, to match or to have just to uh, fulfill all the application. Interesting. Um, and what do you think, so from your personal view and from what you've seen of the organization so far and having taken part in the selection process yourself, what do you think they look for in candidates? What is important, what, what is something important for candidates to have in their resumes? Well, what is important to mention is that the organization is very open in the academic backgrounds the participants uh, should have. So there is no uh, limited to a specific uh, fields, but it's a variety of, 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 of knowledge and academic backgrounds that participants can, can have. So, um, but I think they focus more about that extra value or added value that candidates have uh, in their resume. So, for example, if you are uh, very um, active in your community by doing voluntary services or you are helping your community with your knowledge, with your area of expertise, or if the job experience you have had 
uh, are close to this social or aspect, I think you will be um, more lucky to get a uh, one place in this internship program because I think they are looking for for people that really match with the academic uh, uh, field in a certain unit or department that they require the help. But I think they value more that extra um, aspect of the uh, of the human and social side of the participants. Nice. Okay. okay, perfect. And what are the languages spoken in the organization? So I know that there are four official languages, but what would you say are the main ones spoken at the headquarters? Okay, as you mentioned, uh, there are four official languages, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. But what is also a reality is like a, there is only two main languages that are used in the organization, English and Spanish. What is really um, interesting is like a, at the external part of the organization, all of the announcement and all of the communication they are going to produce are in English. But internally, the situation is a little bit different. Uh, Spanish is the dominant, and yeah, I think it's more useful know Spanish internally to work at the organization. It's a very uh, useful asset if you if you know a little bit and, or a lot. And how are things in your department? So could you share with us what exactly is the department that you work on and on the day to day work? How does this thing how does this thing go? So switching between English and Spanish. Oh, that, that's, that's a very um, interesting question. Um, as my background is accounting and business, I was uh, located in the financial um, department of the of the general secretariat of the organization. So in that unit, um, well, everything that we produce or every procedure that we uh, that we do have to be done uh, using English. So we need to read in English, we need to work in English. But what is really very really, uh, funny is if you have any question or any concern about the things that you are doing and you need to require uh, support from one of your colleagues or, of of, or for your supervisor, you need to ask uh, this uh, to this person in Spanish. You need to use Spanish because uh, most of the workers at the organization are people from Latin America. So actually, although they know English, uh, they prefer uh, speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you need to switch this. Uh, so you're working in English, but if you need a question, uh, you need to switch and to start uh, speaking in Spanish. However, I think um, although this, this, this situation happened, it's, it's a reality. Maybe if you're expecting to, because it's an international organization, you are going to be um, I don't know, speaking, thinking, and working every time, everywhere in English, I think this is not completely true. However, uh, you can also find opportunities to improve uh, those language that you know, maybe Portuguese, French, or uh, English itself, um, because there are many people from different countries uh, from the Americas, and you can have the opportunity to, to, to talk with them and improve that language, even with, uh, with your mates at the internship program, they can also help you with that. So I think it's, this is a, a very interesting aspect of, the, of this international environment to communicate with other languages. Perfect. Very nice. Um, all right. And is it a paid internship? If not, how, how does um, interns usually deal with the whole expenses thing, expenses issue? Okay, well, unfortunately, this is um, not a good aspect of the organization because they do not have enough budget to uh, contribute with any support or any economic support to the participants. So this is an unpaid internship so participants have to uh, cover all the expenses associated with this um, with this opportunity. So if you have to move from another country and your living expenses, uh, your food, transportation, and even healthcare insurance, that is, is something that you need to, to cover and you need to uh, pay for. 
But Oscar, you were telling me that you were part, you are part of a program that is being held in partnership with the U.S. government, right? Has this helped you in any way, or is that connected to the OAS internship that you're taking on right now? Or again, has this helped you in any way to cover some of the expenses for this program? Yeah, sure. Um, in my case, I'm as you mentioned, I'm also part of this um, exchange program that is sponsored by the U.S. Department of State. It is called Community College Initiative Program, and it's basically a, a program that uh, brings to the United States uh, youth people uh, to uh, spend 10 months here to study, to doing voluntary services, but also to uh, give them the opportunity to gain experience in a uh, internship uh, way. So uh, during this moment, uh, they cover all my expenses. So as the Organization of American States also offered the opportunity to be an intern as a part-time intern, so I was able to apply and accomplish the requirement for my exchange program uh, by doing those uh, hours in the Organization of American States. So I think this is uh, another um, good uh, suggestion for uh, people who really would like to come here to Washington, D.C. and be intern of one of these international organizations that you can find here. Uh, it's just try to find ways to um, to help you in a financial uh, manner to while you spend the time here because unfortunately, Washington, D.C. offers a lot of opportunities, but it's a very, very expensive place. So if you can find... a um, uh, scholarships or uh, any other kind of financial um, contributions to your to your to you while you are here. I think that would be a great um, um, opportunity to, to to spend your time here. What piece of advice would you give to someone who wants to apply? Well, the first thing is to say to them just. Go to the website of the organization, try to see what they are doing and try to find something that you consider will be um, add value to your uh, profile as a professional. Um, because yeah, maybe the organization is doing many things, but maybe those things you don't feel that they are going to contribute to your uh, professionalism or the knowledge that you are with. Yeah. So if you find that the organization really is going to add value to your profile, just go for it. And the second thing uh, that is important to do this uh, before is because once you are uh, filling the form, you need to select what uh, you need of the organization you are going to be part. So if you already know what your organization is doing, um, so you will be, uh, you have a, a, a very uh, full uh, horizon about how you would like to uh, acquire value from those units of the organization. Could you, could you explain that in farther detail? I mean, how do you decide which area to work in? Is it the person, is it the candidate who decides which area they will be working for or is it the organization? And who interviews you? Is there like a general team to interview you or are you interviewed by the departments that you were interested in? How does that work? Okay, once you are um, filling the form, they are going to ask you what you need or what department you would like to uh, contribute as an intern. Mm -hmm. So once you should, and I think it's like a three main options, um, that profile or your profile or your application, it goes directly to those units or those department. So the person in charge of that department or the person or the supervisor that is asking for interns, they are going to uh, review all those applications and choose candidates. So probably you can be um, chosen for two supervisors or for even three supervisors. So it means that maybe you're gonna have to do three interviews with three different uh, with a three different person. Mm -hmm. So it it depends. So actually uh, everything is like um, unite or all the same for everybody until the moment that you send your application. After that, I think the selection process is going to vary a little bit, it depends. So for example, in my personal uh, case, 
I was just chosen by one department, the financial department, and and elected and I was selected by the uh, supervisor of the operations sections at the financial department. So I only had one interview, and after that I was uh, I received a call telling me that I was selected for uh, be an intern. However, even in that uh, selection process, the pen it depends on the how many participants has been chosen or can uh, uh, or, or how many they are interviewing. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can have to do a second interview. But I think it depends on the supervisor and how that person is going to uh, choose um, his intern or her intern. Got it. Mm -hmm.